what should my blood sugar be? You say, what's a normal blood sugar? What blood sugar means diabetes? And I know that this is a really important topic. This is a really good question you guys are answering, or rather asking. So I'm going to answer this tonight. Um, so first of all, let's go through, um, uh, let's just very briefly just remind ourselves that diabetes is basically when you have too much sugar um, out in the blood. We really want it to be in um, cells working and doing what it's supposed to do, but instead it's in the wrong place and you got too much sugar out in the blood, okay? Too much sugar. Some people call it the sugar, et cetera. And, uh, you know, we get diabetes, diabetes type 2, uh, from, and, and from a number of ways, right? Uh, eating too many sweets, not keeping a healthy weight. Um, our, our, our body doesn't, uh, insulin doesn't work as well in our body as it should. I mean, there's, there's a few different things. But in terms of blood sugar, let's talk about what your sugar should be, okay? Now, first of all, there's a few different ways to diagnose diabetes. Um, but let's just talk about sort of like the basic Okay, the basic of the basic, okay? Um, you're probably familiar with glucometers. Uh, that's a glucose meter uh, where you're kind of checking your sugar, a meter that allows you to kind of prick your finger and get a little prick of blood that goes on a, on a test strip and it, it tells you what your blood sugar is. Or you can get uh, your blood work done when you go to the lab and we send you. So let me tell you, when you go to the lab and you're getting your labs fasting, fasting lab work done, I'll tell you, first of all, what I am looking for when I get your lab work back, okay? So if your num, if your norm, if, excuse me, if your numbers are normal, okay, when you get your fasting lab work done, and by the way, fasting lab work means you're not eating or drinking for eight hours, okay? You're going first thing in the morning, getting your blood work done. A normal blood sugar is generally between around 70 to 99. Long story short is it's less than 100 for a fasting blood sugar level. That's ideal. That generally means oh, we're not really concerned about diabetes. Your blood sugar is normal. This is awesome. Okay. So when you check that fasting blood sugar, you get your lab work done. That's what I'm looking for. Now for a patient that I check fasting lab work done, it comes back from lab core quest or whatever. Um, if that, that blood sugar number fasting is between 100 and 120 um, about 100 to 125, that's when I'm like, huh, this is borderline. This patient has what we call impaired fasting glucose. That means it is higher than what I want it to be because again, I want that fasting sugar to be less than 100, but it's not high enough to be called diabetes yet. And by the way, before we diagnose diabetes, we usually check these numbers a couple times. Okay, so between 100 and 125, we're saying, oh, that's, that's impaired, that's borderline diabetic, et cetera, as long as it's been rechecked. Now, diabetes is when I have gotten your fasting labs, it comes back to me on LabCorp Quest, and that blood sugar number is 126 or higher. Now, generally, once again, we don't di uh, diagnose diabetes based on one reading, and usually we don't just base it on the fasting uh, glucose level. We're doing other things, which I'm going to go into now, but I wanted to give you an idea of if you don't have any diagnosis at all and you check your fasting sugar, what we would expect it to be for different things. Less than 100 means you're in the clear. 100 to 125 means uh, there may be an issue. You may be pre-diabetic, borderline diabetic, Im have impaired fasting glucose. All those terms kind of mean the same thing. And then 126 or higher, we would say, you know, this person might very well be diabetic, okay? But we also then say, okay, well, are there any better tests than that? Well, the answer is yes. Because I'll tell you this, if I'm going, I'm getting, having you get your blood work done and I get those numbers back, I'm going to send you for a hemoglobin A1C. Now, how many of you guys know what a hemoglobin A1C is? You probably do write in the comments, by the way, if you know what an A1C is. Um, a hemoglobin A1C, um, let me like write in the comments also if you've gotten a hemoglobin A1C done or if you get this done. Hemoglobin A1C is basically a three month average of your sugars. We love that when it comes to checking for diabetes or monitoring how diabetes is going because it doesn't rely just on one sugar number from one day, one time, one trip to the lab. It's kind of a three month average of your sugars, which is awesome. So you say, well, gosh, what should my A1C be then? That percentage, it's a percentage. Well, if you're not diabetic, 
that A1C should be 5.6% or less. If you're pre-diabetic, that number is going to be 5.7 to 6.4%. And if you're diabetic, your number is going to be 6.5% and above or above, okay? Now, just to give you an idea, okay, that fasting blood sugar kind of correlates with the A1C because this is the thing. Let's say I send you for fasting lab work to get your cholesterol, to get your liver test, your kidney test. On it is the glucose. And I see, oh, this person's glucose is not normal. What do we say glucose should be for normal, not diabetes, not prediabetes? We said it should be less than 100 for fasting lab work. If that number is between 100 and 125, which once again means impaired fasting glucose, elevated blood glucose, borderline diabetes, perhaps prediabetes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check an A1C because an A1C is going to give me even more information, okay? And that A1C very likely or may correlate with 5.7 to 6.4. Anyway, let me not get into the weeds, but so th that's the fasting blood sugar numbers, okay? The A1C is the three-month average of your sugars. Again, less than 5.7 is a normal A1C. If you do not have diabetes, if you are not pre-diabetic, uh, pre that is your A1C. If you are 5.7 to 6.4, that means you are pre-diabetic, okay? borderline diabetes, blah, 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 okay? Increased risk of diabetes. If you are 6.5 and above, that means, um, and that's consistent, it's rechecked, et cetera, all this is, means your doctor is rechecking and da, 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 and doing all that stuff, that means diabetes, okay? But just so you know, um, there's a couple of other ways that we can use to diagnose diabetes. And again, I know the title of this video is what, sh you know, what should your blood sugar be? But obviously we're talking about what your, your blood sugar should be in the context of what's normal versus what's pre-diabetic versus what's diabetic, right? That's the context. So that's why I keep referring to that. Um, when it comes to diagnosing diabetes, um, there's a couple of other checks that we can do. And that also has a role in terms of blood sugar. There's something called the oral glucose tolerance test. We do this for pregnant women and sometimes other people have to get it too. This is a way to check to see what your sugars are. This is a test where your sugars are checked, um, uh, your sugar levels are checked before and two hours after drinking a special sweet drink um, that's specific, okay? It's not your own, it's not for, from your own making, it's uh, given to you. Um, and uh, for those people who have uh, 200 or greater after drinking that sweet drink, that's uh, diabetes, that's after two hours, okay? And then also, some people may get a random blood sugar number. That means you just sort of check it willy-nilly and a random blood sugar level of 200 and above means diabetes as well. Now, I know there's a lot of numbers here, okay? There's a lot of numbers that I'm giving you, and I know I've been talking about diabetes in the context of what your blood sugar should be, but that's really important to keep in mind, okay? These numbers that I'm giving you, I'm not telling you what your blood sugar should be if you are diabetic. Your doctor will have a a range of sugars that your a range of numbers that your sugar should be if you are diabetic. Let me give you an example. For many of my patients who are type 2 diabetics, I, I want their sugars to be between 90 and 130 fasting, right? You might say, well, 130? I thought you said that was pre-diabetes. Well, so that's this is a different scenario because that's someone who's already diabetic. This video, what I want to focus on is for those of you who don't have any diagnoses and you're saying, well, gosh, what should my sugar be? What's a normal sugar? And also for those of you that might have been diagnosed with prediabetes or diabetes to help you understand how your doctor came to that conclusion. So let's loop back around because this is really important once again. You know, if you're going around willy-nilly, let's say you get your own labs from LabCorp, you get them on your phone or whatever, a normal blood sugar is less than 100 for fasting labs. 100 to 125 is pre-diabetic, borderline diabetic, impaired fasting glucose, all of those terms are interchangeable. And then 126 and above is diabetic. Of course, we recheck those numbers. Your doctor needs to talk to you about them. And the A1C, if you're not diabetic, that's a three-month average of sugar, should be less than 5.7. 5.7 to 6.4 is pre-diabetes, 6.5 and above is diabetes, okay? Very confusing. It can be very, very confusing. But the most important thing is if you're not diabetic, you ain't got anything, then your sugars, your fasting sugars should be less than 100, okay? Um, if you are diabetic, what I would say is make sure you talk to your doctor and say, okay, doc, I'm checking my sugars as you're telling me to do. I'm taking the meds as you want me to do. What's the sugar I should be aiming for for me?
okay, if you are diabetic. That's what you should be doing, all right? Remember, guys, um, blood sugar is really important. I've done videos on um, signs that your blood sugar is too high. Also, remember, blood sugar being too low can be just as much of a problem, if not even more of a problem. Blood sugar being too low can be deadly. Blood sugar being too high, sky high, can actually be deadly as well. Um, but blood sugar too low is a problem, too. I would say, um, again, you know, we say less than 100 for a fasting blood sugar is normal, but I would say the range is probably anywhere from like 70 to 99 is typically what we would expect if you haven't eaten or had anything to drink for eight hours. For my patients and for many of my people, if you're getting below 70, I'm starting to say, hold up, wait a minute, because that's getting pretty low. If your blood sugar is in the 60s, and to be honest with you, blood sugar in the 70s for some people is going to be too low. It's going to make them feel dizzy, lightheaded, not feeling well at all. Remember, you can uh, you know, go lose consciousness from blood sugar being too low, okay? So when we talk about, I would even argue the, the, you know, the low 70s, certainly the 60s, I'm getting worried, okay? And you should be too. Remember, I'm not your doctor, even though I might wish I were, I'm not. So you got to run all this stuff by your doctor. And, you know, watch this video again if it would be helpful just to sort of see, kind of re go through the numbers. But the most important thing is for those of you who are not diabetic to know what normal is, which is less than 100 for fasting. For those of you who are diabetic, hopefully these numbers will help you understand how and why your doctor categorized you the way you are, pre-diabetes. And make sure you ask your doctor what numbers you should Okay. And any questions? I mean, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, ask your doctor because you want to make sure you know what they want you to be and where they want you to be at. Okay. So just um, another quick little thing. How do you check your sugars? That's with a glucometer. Many health insurance companies will pay for this um, so long as you have the diagnoses that support it, okay? If you don't have a diagnosis of diabetes, um, it may be tough to get a glucometer and stuff like that, um, but, um, but uh, it, 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 you know, we, that is a way to check your sugars. If you're not checking your sugars that way, which if you're not diabetic, you probably don't need to be. Many of my patients, they don't need to be if they're not diabetic. You can see these numbers on your labs when you get them done by your doctor and see what those mean, okay? So make sure, guys, that um, you are following your doctor's advice, that you're getting plenty of exercising, eating healthy, you're doing all that kind of stuff. Make sure you get explanations of your labs. What I would say is make sure that if you see any lab work values of yours and your blood sugar reads higher than what it should be, that you check in with your doctor to find out what that means and if you need any further testing. There's nothing wrong with being proactive about this. I'm, I certainly, as a physician, appreciate it, and hopefully your doctor does as well, okay? Uh, once again, let me know in the comments uh, um, you know, what you thought about this video. I hope this is helpful. I wanted to kind of come to you and just talk to you about what blood sugar should be. Let me know uh, what, if you were told what your blood sugar should be, if you are diabetic. Um, and let me know if you are diabetic, kind of if you're checking your sugars and things like that. Also check out my other videos on diabetes. I'm going to make sure I put them in the comments with links so you can, um, and in the description so you can click on those and make sure you keep up with that. Keep coming with the questions, guys, uh, and make sure you take good care of yourself. Um, for those of you on Facebook, Facebook. I love you. you guys are amazing. Thank you for sending all the stars. I see all of you guys. I'll respond to you personally. Also consider joining my subscription groups. And also for those of you watching me on YouTube, hello. It's great to see you guys. Make sure you subscribe to my channel on YouTube if you've not already. Click the little bell for updates. I also have subscription groups on YouTube as well. And for those of you on YouTube, come on over to Facebook and Facebook, come on over to YouTube too. Make sure you're following me because I've got a little bit of different content in each place so you don't want to miss it. Uh, guys, I'm Dr. Jen. Hope this was helpful. Let me know. Um, I'll see you soon.